Okay, yes you can. Great. That took fucking forever! My mic was not working there for some reason, and the button feels like it's getting a bit... stuck. Uh, oh, hello, JJ. Did not notice your comment there. Uh, yeah, bloody hell, lad. We all need a bloody distraction at the moment, or at least if you're a Manchester United fan. Let me just uh, do something else here before we get chatting. Just want to check something there just very quickly. I just want to test out how this sounds. So let me just mute the mic again for a sec. There we go. Perfect. Uh, I felt like the mic was very distorted in the last few episodes, but uh, I've just turned it down a notch there, so that uh, should fix it. So sorry about that. But uh, we are back with uh, episode three of Clone United. <coughs> Excuse me. This was supposed to be on uh, either Monday or Tuesday, and both days my internet, when I started streaming, because the stream actually did start twice, if for some reason it just kept crashing. So I don't know what was going on. I said I'd wait a couple of days and now is a better time than ever because as JJ has just pointed out there, Manchester United just got smashed by Sevilla in the Europa League and I need a distraction. And that distraction is getting smashed uh, on FIFA with Clone United because I feel like that's all we ever do. But listen, at least we have a bit of fun along the way. And we can all enjoy it together. Now I can't find my fucking drink. Why is everything going wrong right now? Where is my drink? It was right behind me, never mind. So, <coughs> oh my god, and there's that never-ending cough that just feels like it's never going away. So, last time out, we had a bit of a mixed stream. Um, what game did we even start with? We started with, I think it was Southampton, uh, which we got a 2-1 win in. Then we lost to Leeds, United and Chelsea. Uh, we beat Brighton 4-1, which was a good result, and now we have Everton. So, I'm not sure how many games we'll do. I think we'll definitely play this Everton game. Uh, play Villa, probably play Newcastle, and maybe yeah, maybe maybe we'll just play all the games in November, and then we'll probably sim the game against Bournemouth and leave it with the game against Chelsea. I think that might be a a good way of going about things. Everton to kick off. So if I just show you a quick look at the league table before we go into the game, we are eleventh, but we've conceded thirty one goals, which is abysmal. Everton just behind us in thirteenth, so this could be a big result for us if we were to get it. Uh, just to give you a quick look at the squad, JJ is the man in form. Oh, this stupid fucking glitch! We have to wait till after this game to look at the stats. It's a weird glitch they have in FIFA this year. It won't show you the stats until after you play a game. Um, when you load up the save, it's so frustrating. But whatever, let's just get into this game against Everton. We'll go with our strongest 11. And hope that we come out of it with three points. And a clean sheet. We are still yet to keep a clean sheet in the Premier League. I actually don't think we've kept a clean sheet at all this season in any competition. Oh, God. Right. Skip the pleasantries. Let's just get on with it. But yes, a very disappointing result for United in the Europa League. An abysmal performance. I'd love to rant and rave and, and say how bad we were. But honestly, lads, I just don't even have the energy. It was just one of those performances. I was already nervous going into the game because of some of the uh, squad um, issues we've had with injuries and whatnot. And I know I know Rashford and Shaw were back, but they just looked a bit off the pace when they came on. And I, I just, I don't know. I, I feel like it, it, I would have been a bit surprised if we'd gone and won that game. Um, or at least won it comfortably. But I, I really fucking hope Sevilla don't. I fucking hate Sevilla. I tell you that much. Oh. Oh, it was a good save. Sevilla are just a, a team I can't fucking stand. To be quite honest. Oh, Paul nearly scored. Oh, that was a terrible shot. But uh, it will be interesting to see who wins the Europa League now. Uh, I, I mean, like the Europa League. Listen, people want to give the competition a bit of shit. I think it's. I think the Europa League has gotten better over the last few years. Obviously, you know, since they, uh, since uh, oh, here we go, here we go, Colin, Colin. Oh my God, Alex, that was terrible. But um, I think the, the competition has gotten a lot better, especially since they. Um, made the, the winners qualify for the Champions League. It just it, it makes it feel like there's a lot more at stake. Uh, commentary said Luke Shaw picked up a knock. Yeah, I did see towards the end of the game he was hobbling along a little bit. So that's a concern. Martial injured again. I love Anthony Martial. I just made a TikTok about the game, actually, and I said it. I, I just think he needs to go. I, I just don't think that uh, Martial is, is up to it anymore. He's a great player when he's when he's on form and he's fit. But that's the problem, is he's never fit. 
he is never fit of injuries, you know. Oh, good block. Uh, so Martial, I, I just think it's time to go. A lot of players need to go. A lot of players do need to go, JJ. I think Harry Maguire, you know. I, I, and listen, I know it's easy to pick on Harry Maguire. And I'm not going to, like, you know, call him names or anything today. But he's just not good enough. He's just not a, a Man United player. I mean, he is technically. Because he... Oh, I tell you who, who could be a Man United player, though, is JJ. The English fan, Mr. Roy, strikes again. We take the lead against Everton get in there at least there's one positive to take but you know he, Harry Maguire is a Man United player in the sense that he's under contract and he puts on the jersey and plays when he's picked but he's not of the standard of a player that should play for Manchester United never mind you know be a fucking captain and, and again like people would say that's a personal dig on the guy no it's just I just don't think he's good enough best part of my day me scoring brilliant finish as well JJ I tell you what your weak foot is getting really good as well which is a positive Lads, I have to say, though, as, as bad as the game was, I feel kind of refreshed. I feel like this is the most relaxed I've been on a stream. I felt like I was very on edge the, the first couple of streams. Um, and even like with my podcast and stuff, I felt like the quality was suffering a bit. But there's something about today. I just feel like there's like I'm not carrying around the burden that I had been carrying around. And I feel great. Apart from, you know, United losing 3 that's annoying. But look, as I say, I kind of went into the game... With low confidence. But, um, yeah. Other players need to. I, I, I mean, like, you know, people say Veghorst. Look, at least we know Veghorst. At least he's only on loan, so we don't have to worry about, like, shipping him away anywhere. Apparently, Besiktas actually want him back. Uh, obviously, he's on loan from Burnley, but he was on loan at Besiktas um, before he joined United. And apparently, they want him back on another loan deal, which, you know, good luck to him. And listen, he's a hard worker and he does his best, but he's just not good enough. He's just simply not good enough. Oh, what a save by Schmeichel. <coughs> oh, my God. Excuse me. Oh, I will read out that comment there in a second. There we get the throw in. Uh, Ten Hag also needs to get better uh, not collapsing. Once we go behind, uh, he sinks as a team. I think that will come eventually. But, like, that goes back to kind of, you know, what we were just saying there about bringing in players... You know, like, the one thing I will say about Eric Ten Hag is that he doesn't have a deep squad. You know, he, he just doesn't, like, you know what I mean? Uh, in certain areas, you know, like, okay, Graham, we could take off Sancho and bring on Rashford. Um, but, like, defensively, he really had, there wasn't an awful lot he could do. Um, brilliant finish by Ferreira. That was fantastic. Oh, I've been doubting this guy. But, God, he's been playing really well in this game. 2-0. Get in there. I'm staying relaxed, though. I'm staying relaxed. I don't want to get too carried away just yet. God, this is bringing me back to the Turley United days. I don't know, I, I just got a weird case of deja vu. <laughs> United, well, it's probably because United are playing terrible as they were when we started Turley United. <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry for coughing, lads. I have this tickle in my throat which has been there for like three weeks now and it's really annoying. But we're 2 0 up. Cruising. And we're showing Manchester United how it needs to be done. But, uh, yeah, as I say, like, we need more options. And, like, it's one thing I didn't mention there earlier, David De Gea. Listen, whatever about the first goal, you can blame De Gea, you can blame Maguire. There's an argument both ways. You can blame both of them if you want. But that that third goal, what was he doing? Like, what was he doing? Um, it, it, was, it was bad. It was bad. And I love De Gea. I do. But it's, like... That was that was an abysmal error. Now, I, listen. Whether you whether you think he should be the number one or not, I've always said we need another keeper because Dean Henderson, who's out on loan at Forest, I think he's good, but I don't think he's good enough to be a number one goalkeeper. I don't think he's any better than De Gea, right? This season, the only other options we have are Tom Heaton, who's who's good. He's a good goalkeeper, but you know he's he's at the the. The end, you know, he's nearing the end of his career now. He, he's on the, the wrong end of 30. And he you know, he's, he's in the latter part of his career is probably the more uh, correct term. And I don't, you know... Uh, I think he'll get his chance, Henderson. Right, I have an interesting point to make about that, JJ. And I will and I will come on to it. Uh, but the other option we have is Jack Butland, who's only on loan from Crystal Palace. I mean, Jack Butland... 
Like, I don't even think he was playing for Palace when he was there. So, there's that. But, you know, you just said there about, <coughs> about Dean Henderson. Um, I nearly called you Jack, <laughs> JJ. I think Dean Henderson wants to be... He wants to be a number one. That's It's as simple as that. He really does. But if you look at Nottingham Forest now, right? Uh, oh, sorry. I didn't see the first comment uh, before that. Sorry. I just got rid of the chat. My bad. Uh, chatting. Where we go? Chatting with friends. Uh, many of them say De Gea is washed. He's not the De Gea from a few years ago, but I still want him to be my favourite player for so many years. Very good point. Butland will put butts in seats. Uh, he's used to having his butt on a seat, I'll tell you that much. But um, the thing about Dean Henderson is, I you know, I know he's injured at the moment, but you look at Forrest, right? And look at Kaylor Navas. Even last weekend when we played, when uh, they played against United. Kaylor Navas. They lost the game 2-0, but it... it should have been so much more. Obviously, their other goalkeeper is Wayne Hennessy. I don't think Dean Henderson puts in that type of performance. And I think he'll want to be a number one. I don't think Eric Ten Hag, if he wants another goalkeeper, that he's going to stick with Henderson. I, I, I just don't think it'll happen. Um, I reckon he'd want to go for another goalkeeper. I, but, like, I think we need another one. Because I, I think Henderson will leave. Tom Heaton's at the latter part of his career. Jack Butland's, you know, he's probably not even going to make an appearance this season. And David De Gea, I, I want to keep him. I do. I still think we should keep him. But we should also have another option. As we get this free kick here. Alex takes it. Not a bad effort by any stretch of the imagination. Speaking of goalkeepers, Sean Dyche. Maybe thinking of making a change there. Jordan Pickford not cutting it out for him. Pickford is actually someone I haven't used a lot in FIFA. Oh my fucking god! Oh my god! Oh my god, that's gonna for a throw in, I think! Oh, it's a goal kick. I don't think Ten Hag will spend millions on a keeper when I'm sure he's thinking on spending it on outfield players. I didn't think Ten Hag would sign another left back. But then he signed another left back, and we got Turn Malassia, and Alex Tellez went out on loan. So I wouldn't be surprised. I really wouldn't be surprised. But we are 2-0 up here. Here's a Woby. Everton. I'd love to... I have done career modes with Everton in the past. I'd love to do another one with them. Um, and I, I, I think I will do it soon. But I think that I'll probably do it when they get their new stadium. As much as I love Goodison Park and I'll be sad to see it go. I do think that's, that's always a good time to do a career mode with the team is when they get a new stadium. And uh, I think that would be... Oh... Oh, unlucky. Unlucky. Terrell nearly putting in JJ there. But, uh, yeah, Everton, they, are, they have been a, a fun team to do career modes with. Alex! What is Alex's shooting? Why is he shooting so bad? <laughs> oh, my God. I need to look at this. What fucking shooting did I give Alex? He's got 78 shooting. How is he so bad? That's so weird. What about the Youth Academy? I'm always vouching for this. Well, I mean, if you want to talk about the goalkeepers in the Youth Academy, that Vitek, I think, or Vitek, whatever his name is, he was on the bench today. Um, I haven't seen much of him. But you see, I think he's at a stage in his career where he, he needs games, you know? So he'll have to go out on loan um, if, if he wants to get that experience. I don't think you can just throw him right in, unless he's, you know, something we haven't seen before and he's spectacular. But... You know, I think if that was the case, he'd be given... I think what we've seen from Ten Hag with the Youth Academy is he won't play youth players for the sake of it. He'll play them when he thinks they're ready and they're good enough. I think that we've seen that with Garnacho, um, Maynou, who's obviously played a few games. You know, that there's there has been... Uh, oh, shit, shit, shit! Oh, it's still no fucking clean sheets! Oh, my God! Callum Wilson! I feel like we're never going to keep this clean sheet. Oh, it's so irritating. Ah, oh, right, but uh, as I was saying, I, I think that you know, when it comes to the Youth Academy, Ten Hag will he he'll, he'll promote players when he feels like it's right. Um, and look, you know, I, I respect that decision. I, 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 you know, as much as I love players coming up to the academy, I think there's, there's, there's promoting players when they're ready, and then there's just promoting players for the sake of promoting them. You know, it's I, I just think we need the quality. We need the quality right now. 
Oh, fuck. If that can come from the Youth Academy, great. But, um, you know, I think the youth players need leaders as well, though. I think we need even more of them. You know, we, obviously it's great that we have Bruno, who we missed a lot today. Good save by Schmeichel. Casemiro is a leader. Listen, it wasn't his best game today, but, you know, you know, it wasn't a lot of players' best games today. Um, I think Rashford can be a leader. Maguire, I just, I think he's, I, I do think, you know, oh, give me a second. Give me a second. That's beautiful. Oh, my God. That was crying out to be finished. I think Maguire has kind of become a bit self-centered. And listen, it's... With the way that the circumstances have gone... Like, sometimes Maguire says something, right? Like, when he said recently he had nothing to prove. And it's like... It's a really stupid thing for him to be saying. Like, there's very few players who can say that where you can go, yeah, like, fair enough. Like, if Ronaldo or Messi say that, it's kind of like, um, okay. But when Harry Maguire says it, it's like, mm, Oh, no. No! Fuck! Oh my god! Oh, we've just thrown away three points. We have just fucking thrown away three points. Oh, I need to make a few changes now. Um, that is so disappointing. Oh my god. From one bad result in real life to a fucking shit result in this career mode. Oh my god, I know we'd stay above Everton, but like we played so well! Oh, it's a great ball! Schuler's only just on! What a save! What a fucking save! I can't believe this. Oh my god, I'm actually going to be so gutted. Unless JJ can pull it out of the bag! Oh, what a goal! What a goal by JJ! <laughs> oh, the Englishman Mr. Roy has done it again! That was a brilliant finish in off the bar! Joe Tarl is even running down the flank to get involved in the celebrations. 3-2! And what a way to do it! Oh my god! No way did Everton deserve to get back into this game. And JJ, what a finish! <coughs> oh, I'm nearly choking at it. It didn't even bounce when it went down and hit the bar and it just rolled across the floor. Pulled it out the bag. Yes, you did, JJ, once again. 10 goals in 11 league games. That is some going. Oh, my God. Right. Um, I'm going to... Bring on Fernandez, I think. I think Pori can actually do a job at left back. We'll make that defensive change. JJ deserves a round of applause. We'll give Evan Ferguson an appearance. These are just time-wasting subs. Well, you know, the first one was tactical. I want JJ to get his flowers. So the straight out of Klein audience can give him a round of applause. Full of aggression, that was. We weren't dropping points. No, we weren't. We nearly did and we went for it. And please tell me that's wasted enough time. Come on, ref, blow that whistle. Blow that fucking whistle, ref. Ref, there we go. Oh, three huge points. Gutting we couldn't get the clean sheet. Because we're still conceding far too many goals. But we have JJ at the other end, putting them in the back of the net. Oh, get in there. Get in there. Three big points. Three very, very big points. Oh, and we needed them. We bloody needed them, I tell you that much. We need to just keep winning in this career mode. Never a dull moment. If, if there was ever a slogan for my career modes, especially create a club career modes, I think that would be it. Never a dull moment. Maybe I need to change the descriptions that we've jumped up to 7th, even though we have a minus 11 goal difference. 33 goals conceded in 11 games is abysmal. But somehow it has us... Up around the European spots. Spurs are still doing really well in the league. Chelsea second. Liverpool third. West Ham fourth. United are doing terrible. And the United are 17th. But they still battered us. But whatever. That was a huge, huge result. 
Oh, that's made me feel a bit better now. It's been a fucking bad day for United fans, but that made me feel good. Right, Aston Villa up next. Now, I'm going to do something weird here, right? I haven't been able to use the purple kit yet, and I really want to use it. So, Villa... Oh, no! Actually, uh, every kit kind of clashes here. Who do we have next? Ah, oh, that's annoying. I really wanted to use it. And I thought, fuck it, let's just, you know, psych psychologically mess with Villa and put them in the away kit. Right, you know what? In the Newcastle game, I might just wear the purple kit at home. We'll change it up a small bit. We'll see. We'll see. We'll have to play in the Ireland kit for now, which I do love. I do love this jersey, but still. Um, I think I'm going to go with the same team. Yeah. Don't think there's any reason to change. Uh, we don't really have many options. But yeah, Villa Park. Let's hopefully get another three points. Right, skip all this nonsense. Let's just get on with it. I do have a memory of playing an FA Cup, I think quarterfinal it was here. Back in the Tarl United days in season one. Remember Tarl actually got injured. He only missed like three games, but uh, I remember being so nervous that he was going to miss the rest of the season. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh my god, I hope this cough just goes away. It's so annoying. That's gone. Kasper Schmeichel playing at one of his dad's former stadiums in Villa Park. Obviously went there before he went to Man City. Not looking forward to the FA Cup against Brighton. No, I, I honestly, JJ, I, I, I'm not confident about that game either. I mean, listen, Bruno will be back for it, and that gives me a bit more confidence than I had coming into today. But, I mean, Brighton, I mean, they've just been brilliant this season. Um, I don't know. I, I we, we, All I can really say is we'll see what happens. It's so hard to predict, to be honest with you, with, with the, the way things have gone for us in, in recent times. Probably really since we won the, the League Cup. Um, it's just been a strange time. I, I, I would be kind of... Like, listen, if we finish this season, right, with just the League Cup and finish top four, then I think that... And then, I, you know, then I, I kind of look back and go, you know, it, it's... I said at the start of the season, I wanted to win a trophy and qualify for the Champions League. And it's like, listen, that's what we got. We played some good football along the ways and we know where we need to improve. Oh, what a block. That was some block. But I just feel like it could have been so much more. I just feel like it could have been more. Do you think Ten Hag will drop some players? I mean, well, we know Maguire isn't playing because he's suspended. Um, I mean, he's not going to drop De Gea, and nor should he. Listen, De Gea didn't have a great performance today, but... I mean, who are you going to play, Jack Butland? Like, that's just not going to happen. Um, Sancho, I reckon, will be dropped. I'm so bad at free kicks in this game. Can I bring this in? Tell you what, it wasn't too far away. Um, <coughs> I don't think Sancho will play. I'd like to see Fred play. I really would. Um, not that I think Eriksen was terrible today. Not that it, you know, he wasn't amazing, but I don't think it was his fault. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think it will be interesting. Veghorst is definitely playing, yeah. I think so too. And listen, at the end of the day, that's just down to lack of options. I mean, technically you could play Rashford up front and keep Sancho in the team, but I don't know. I, I, I'd I be surprised if that happened. I think Veghorst will definitely start. And look, hopefully he has a good game, but I wouldn't be holding my hat on that. But it will be a, it'll be a very interesting game. Um, I'm still looking forward to it, because listen, it's cup semi-final at the end of the day. So I'm still going to look forward to it, but we'll see what happens. As Ferreira, clean through here. Can he get two goals in two games? Oh, it's a terrible finish. My God, I burped halfway through that sentence. 
An absolutely terrible finish. Ferreira, JJ. Go on, lad, have a go. Good block. Kamara is Tarl. I thought it would be weird using Tarl as a centre midfielder as opposed to using him as a striker, but I've actually kind of enjoyed it. It's been kind of different. And as I say, that's the position I used to love playing most in real life. Oh, Schmeichel, get up, lad. Oh, good double save by Kasper Schmeichel. Oh, great ball by Alex. JJ, oh, unlucky. Just wouldn't fall for him. Good ball to Tarl. I'm onside. That was a fucking terrible effort. Vegkors definitely... Oh, sorry, I already read that one out. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, Vegkors, I think he will play. I think he will play. I just really hope Man City don't win the fucking champ. I don't want him to win anything this season, obviously. Is JJ. Oh, good save. Oh, unlucky. I really hope they don't win anything, but... God, I mean, the league, that Arsenal game will say a lot next week which I'm, I'm looking forward to that game but also at the same time I'm like Jesus Christ if, if Arsenal don't win if as long as Arsenal can get some sort of result in that game I think this should be okay oh brilliant by JJ 1-0 5 minutes before half time I think we're starting to get into a bit of a groove now with this team I think I'm starting to get used to it you know it was a big uh, risk starting in the Premier League if they've beat Madrid, they've won, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I would I would probably agree with that, JJ. You know who I'd love to see win it, though? I would love to see AC Milan win it. And it's nothing against Inter Milan. It's nothing against Real Madrid. I mean, if Real Madrid won it again. As long as Man City don't win it, I'm happy, to be honest. But AC Milan, I used to love watching AC Milan growing up. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say I watch them all the time in the league. But I used to love watching them in the Champions League back in the 2000s. Ah, oh, what a time. But, uh... That they were always a fun team to watch in Europe. I, it would be nice to see them uh, win again. Yeah, and no, all Milan semi final. I'm looking forward to it, JJ. Really am. Just realised that. Yeah, I know it'll be uh, it'll be fun. Like the fact that you know, not only are they local rivals, but they play in the same stadium. Like it's oh, like it's gonna be. It's a real throwback. It's a real throwback game, and it's great. It's great to see it because like the two Milans, you know, they've always been up there. Um, as I've been growing up, and obviously in, in recent history, you know, they've gotten better in the last couple of years, but in, in more recent history, they haven't been as successful as they used to be, and oh, shit, shit, shit there we go, brilliant uh, shows how both teams have bounced back, exactly like, it's great to see them back up there again, um, even though it's mad they both currently sit outside the top four in uh, Syria, but that's because Juventus is 15 points deduction actually got overturned so Juventus shot up the league from like 7th up to 3rd so both Milan teams dropped out um, but no I, I'd, lo I'd love to see I'd love to see AC Milan win it I, you know it's nothing against Inter I just I always had a bit of a soft spot for AC Milan growing up it'd be cool to see them win it again JJ oh my god how did that not go in But yeah, 2007, the last time AC Milan won the Champions League, and 2010, the last time Inter Milan won it. That was obviously when Mourinho did the treble there. 2007 then with AC Milan, Kaká, remember playing that day? Inzaghi scoring twice against Liverpool, two years after the Istanbul game. Oh, good save by Schmeichel. It was nearly a disaster class at the back there. I don't think uh, I, I don't think either Milan team will win it though. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I hate to like ruin the kind of you know nostalgia trip I was going on there or that we were going on there. But uh, oh, I thought that was in. But um, <coughs> it's corner. But I, I'd say I think either Madrid or Man City will win it. But I'd I'd like to see Milan win it. It would be nice. It would be nice. Uh, I prefer AC, and one of my favourite career modes in the past was with AC Milan. Yeah, I actually, uh, I remember you telling me that before, actually, JJ, that you did a career mode with AC Milan. Yeah, they are a fun team to do a career mode with. I actually remember, I think it was FIFA 18, I did a very fun AC Milan career mode. Um, I really enjoyed it. And I actually, I remember I was halfway through, I think it was my fourth season with them, and I just never got around to finishing it, which is a shame. But I uh, know they are a fun team to do a career mode with.
I think those types of teams, you know, the big clubs that haven't been as successful in recent times. I know they won the league last year, but, you know, they haven't been as successful as they used to be. Um, I think it's probably the best way of putting it. You know, I think those are always fun career modes to do. Half an hour to go. We're still 1-0 up. Michael, not the best clearance in the world there. But Inter Milan, I remember that their uh, 2010 treble winning team. We actually knocked them out of the Champions League the year before then. Vidic and Ronaldo getting the goals. Obviously, Vidic would go on to play for Inter Milan in 2014 and retired there in 2016. I actually remember that summer when Vidic left. We actually played into Milan in a pre-season friendly. We beat them on penalties after a nil-all draw in America. It was kind of it was surreal seeing the Manu Vidic playing against United so soon after leaving the club. But um, what a player he was, Vidic. That was when Van Gaal had just taken over. Doesn't feel like it was that long ago, but uh, it was nine years ago. Where does the time go? Where does the time go? Like it's crazy. Like you know, I think back to years like 2013 and 2014. I think. Jeez, they were all around a decade ago. That, that's mental. Speaking of AC Milan, oh, Calabria. The right back who we signed from Milan. With the effort there. But yeah, life, life goes by really quick. I mean, I remember Jose Mourinho having that conversation with Deli Ali, and, uh, and saying that to him. He was saying, you know, he's, I'm 50, whatever now. And he's like, yesterday I was 20. And, you know, obviously I'm not in my 50s, but uh, I get what he means. Like, I mean, I'm 25 now. Like, I remember, like, I remember when I was, you know, it's funny because my sister will be 12 this year, but I remember being 12 like it was yesterday. You know, it's, it's just, it's mental. It's, it is mental how fast time goes. God, we're getting very deep on this week's, uh, and I said this week's podcast, on this episode of Clown United. But I liked having these conversations. These are the conversations that uh, I actually kind of enjoy having while we play FIFA. It's kind of therapeutic in a way. Oh, God, I'll tell you what's not therapeutic is a fucking ball like that but Porig with one of the best tackles I've seen in this game enjoy your life is the moral of the story because you only get one I tell you what it goes by so quickly I, I always kind of get those feelings after I referee a wrestling show like if you had told I don't know 13 year old Dylan that he'd have ref refereed seven or eight pro wrestling shows at this stage. He wouldn't have believed it. I mean, 18-year-old Dylan probably wouldn't have believed it. Well, maybe he would have, because he was a cocky son of a bitch. <laughs> but, you know, 21-year-old 20, Dylan probably wouldn't have believed it. But I tell you what, 25-year-old Dylan can say, well, you did it, pal. So believe it. I used to have a teacher, actually, Mr. Delaney, and his he used to teach me Irish, and his uh, classes were always like that. You know, we'd, we'd, we'd start talking about a topic, and somehow, I remember one time, somehow we got onto, you know, some, somehow we, the conversation of uh, when you stub your toe came up, right? Oh, I thought that was in. And somehow, from, from that conversation, you know, talking about stubbing toes, we ended up on to how the British took over Ireland. Like, work that one out. <laughs> but that's a sign of, you know, a good conversation. When, you know, when you just get on to so many different topics. And the conversation just flows. But then you stop and you realise, we were talking about stubbing toes earlier. How the fuck did we get here? Anyways, one minute of added time. Can we hold on? Can we hold on, Villa? Oh, I just realised we haven't even made a sub in this game. <gasps> Thought that was going to be a penalty. It's gonna be a corner. Britain stopped Ireland's toe. Oh, I wish I, I wish I'd have thought of that joke at the time. <coughs> uh, listen, it's all in the past. All in the past. Right, I'm just making these subs just for the sake of it. Uh, I feel like I never played this card. Also, guys, so we'll bring him on. Uh, Fernandez, how tall is he? Six foot one. Calabria is five foot ten. So we'll get a bit of height there. Pori can go there. Uh, yeah, that's all I'm going to do for now. I say for now, like this is the last play of the game. They've brought their keeper up, Martinez. Oh, go on. Go on. Yes, we've kept a clean sheet. 
Oh, we've done it! This feels like winning the fucking league! 1 0 against Villa. JJ with the only goal of the game. But we keep a clean sheet for the first time in this career mode. The first of many, hopefully. Oh, we needed that. We badly needed that. Just the one goal, but it was all we needed. Three points, coming back to Klein. And Kasper Schmeichel will have a comfortable night's sleep with that clean sheet. Get in there. Great job indeed. That was a very good performance. I'm very proud. Very, very proud. We have a player chat here. Uh, Fernandez. Oh, he's a crucial first team player. Hmm, okay. Maybe we need to review his contract. Where is he? There he is. Let's see. Bring that down a wee bit. Yeah, we'll put him on important, because he is an important first team player. It's just that we just don't have a lot of games this season, so there's not a big need to rotate the team as much. But I tell you what, we have Newcastle up next, who are just below us. We are in 7th. They have 15 points, but what position are they actually in? They are 11th. Um, sorry if you can hear that weird noise in the background. My bottle makes that noise sometimes, which is weird. United have shot up to 10th, which is good to see. So maybe we could make a change or two for the Newcastle game, because we do have Arsenal right after it so I think what I might do is <coughs> excuse me I'm going to give Porig a game at left back why not actually no what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give I'm going to put Porig on the bench we'll start Fernandez. he's got decent weak foot so he can go there um, I'm going to play Afif, Afif, however you say his name, he's going to start for Ferreira. And I'm trying to think of what else I can do. I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to give Evan Ferguson a start. Hopefully we can do all right. Keep JJ fit for the Arsenal game, but he's there if we need him, which is great. And Kent is also going to go on the bench uh, instead of Hobbs, because we know Parra can do the job. Uh, left back, if we need to. Right, here we go. Straight out of Klein. Up against Newcastle. Just realised I forgot to put us in the purple kit. Oh my god. Maybe we'll do it against Arsenal. We'll see. Uh, I was looking at 2013's Raw. Uh, as I'm thinking of going from a certain point. Uh, right up to Mania 30. As this period in wrestling is my lowest point, And I almost quit altogether. Very funny you say that JJ. Because in 2013. The night after Wrestlemania 29. I Or the day after Wrestlemania 29. I decided I was going to take a break from watching wrestling. And I stopped watching weekly wrestling for a good 11, 12 months. Um, I didn't start watching week to week again until the night after the Royal Rumble, when CM Punk left in 2014. And even then, I watched every Raw up to WrestleMania. And I watched a few Raws after it, um, just because, you know, there was some stuff going on. There was some weeks where I just caught the highlights. Um, then, kind of in the summer, I was watching more and more. Um started watching some stuff outside WWE and then I stumbled across NXT and the rest is history the rest is history but yeah that's really funny that you uh, you bring that up I was uh I wasn't like dumb with wrestling like I knew that I was at, at the most I was just going to take a break from it but it was a break that lasted probably longer than I expected it to you know but I think I'm honestly I'm glad I took that break from it because I think when I got back in it made me appreciate it so much more, so much more. You can hear me say it to Sami Zayn on this channel. Actually, I tell Sami Zayn that his match with Adrian Neville at NXT Takeover or Evolution made me fall back in love with pro wrestling. Now that show in general made me fall back in love with pro wrestling, and obviously Finn Balor was a big uh, part of that as well. But that just that match in particular was just like holy shit, like. That like wrestling can be this cool, as in like, obviously Sting came, uh, you know, debuted in WWE the month before, and that was amazing. But um, I, th I think you know, in terms of like actual wrestling matches, you know, I think you know, just bell to bell, um, you know, with no like shenanigans or outside interference. Sami Zayn and Adrian Neville, they were a, a big reason for that. Oh, it was just what a match! What an absolute fucking fantastic match! There's Alex, Chavez, Paulinha. He's been a very good signing for us. But he loses the ball here. 
I think I might change his number. I don't think number. I thought number seven was all right for him, but I think I might change him. It just looks a bit weird. Uh, oh, I will read those comments in just a second. For some reason, see the comments normally pop up on my screen, but sometimes I miss them. <coughs> and then when I notice them, it's always when I'm like, either like just about to go on an attack or when I need to defend. It's so annoying. It's never at a time where I can actually read them. It's not like at least Jesus Christ. It's it's. You know, nobody can plan that. It's just, it's just, it's so typical that every time I notice it, it's when, oh God, when he's defend. Oh, what a goal. What a goal by Bruno Guimaraes. Oh, well, there'll be no clean sheet here. It was a brilliant finish, but it gives me a chance to read out the comments. Uh, I was just getting smart enough to realize I can stop as I did stop watching TNA in 2014 and didn't come back and, uh, or didn't come back until 2018. I always watched WWE Mania because Brian winning at Mania kept me watching. And AJ going to New Japan uh, uh, springed up my fandom. Yeah, it was, it was a good time. It was a good time to be a wrestling fan in the mid-teens. Um, I think there was, uh, you know, I, I, well, from the mid-teens onwards, really. You know, it's... Listen, I, I, I still love wrestling. Of course I love wrestling. And it's, you know, obviously I'm involved in it now, which makes it even cooler. But, like... I think since the pandemic, obviously, listen, lots of things have changed after the pandemic. You know, not just wrestling, just lots of things in life. But, um, I don't know. Sometimes I look at the indie scene now, and there's some great talent. Like, don't get me wrong, the talent are not the problem. I'm fucking my talent are, though. Oh, we're 2-0 down to Newcastle. We're being brought back down to reality here. Maybe I made a couple too many changes. 2-0 down. Not looking good. But uh, anyways, you know, the, the indie scene at the moment, I just kind of look at it. And, you know, I'm, I'm obviously I'm involved in the Irish ind independent scene. But uh, the indie scene, just kind of in general. Oh, good man, Evan Ferguson. Well, he's not JJ. He's far from it. But he has gotten us back in it here. I think that's his first Premier League goal, if I'm not mistaken. It's a good time to get it. Alex does well. Ball across. Pope couldn't keep it out. And it's 2-1. It's a good finish as well. Uh, the Fiend and Rollins ended in the DQ. I didn't watch till Mania. I'm taking breaks when I need it. <coughs> yeah. Um, there was a point I was just going to make there, and as soon as I went to make it, it's completely gone out of my head. It was Evan Ferguson's first league goal. Fair play to him. Let's see if we can get more. Yeah, I, I, I remember. I do remember that time. I was watching a lot of, like, I was watching pretty much every single bit of wrestling I could. Um, at, at that stage, I was watching a W. What a save! Uh, a W. Uh, obviously WWE. I was watching a lot, a lot more independent stuff back then. Um, this is all kind of in the lead up to the pandemic, and then I think just after the pandemic, I was watch. I was glued to AEW when you know around the time Punk uh, came back, and I was glued to. I was glued to Dynamite and Rampage every week, and then I think that uh, obviously I, I stopped refereeing for a bit, and I was just in a bit of a weird place at wrestling, and I kind of just st I stopped watching pretty much everything modern for the time being. Oh, good save! Oh. How has that not gone in? How has that not gone in? And then when I got back, it's funny, what made me kind of get back in, it's funny there, I just read that comment there about the Rumble. Yeah, the Royal Rumble, even though the, 20, uh, the 2022 Royal Rumble wasn't great. It was Johnny Knoxville. The announcement of Johnny Knoxville being in the Royal Rumble is what made me go, hmm, that's interesting. That sounds like fun. Oh, that was an early 3-1. And yeah, that's... Uh, and then I think I just realized that, you know, listen, I'm a WWE guy. WWE have always been my favorite. They always will be my favorite. And, you know, that's... I I don't want to say I exclusively watch it, because I do check out other bits and pieces as well. Oh, my God. Let's just pretend that didn't happen. Um, I do watch other bits and pieces as well, but, like, WWE is just where I get the most enjoyment for myself. I think I kind of realized that, look, you don't have to watch everything. You can, you can watch what you enjoy and then check out other things as a... Uh, other things as it happen, as they happen, I should say. Oh, but we're 3-1 down here. We will have to make some changes at half time. Oh, but it's 3-2. Alex with a brilliant finish. 
We're staying in this game. Don't like the fact that we've had to concede three more goals after keeping our first clean sheet. Down but not out though. Great ball across. Alex with a lovely finish. Uh, <coughs> Sammy versus Knoxville was the best build and best match of uh, WrestleMania uh, uh, 38. Yeah, no, it was. It was. I, I fucking, that's, I've said it. It's probably my favorite match of all time. Because it was so... It's a match that, it, on paper, if you told someone, like, this was how the match was going to go, you'd probably be like, that sounds ridiculous and it's not going to work. And then you watch it and it's like, oh my god, this is the greatest thing ever. It was it was amazing. Right, uh, I'm not a big fan of Fernandez at the back. I've, I've given you a chance and you're not doing too well. So Porig's going to come on at halftime. Um, Ferguson has scored. So I'm willing to give him another few minutes to see what happens. You know, I think Porig is the only change we're going to make for now. I want, I want to bring on JJ when maybe there's about half an hour left and certain players are getting tired and JJ can come on fresh as a daisy and hopefully grab us a goal that would put us in front. It'd be nice if we grabbed an equaliser before then. But I think I've kind of got one eye on Arsenal as well at the moment because that's going to be a big game and I don't want too many players tired for it. Oh, Porig, you've only just come on and you've nearly given the ball away. Oh. Come on, let's get rid of it. Good man. Good man. I will read that comment as well in a second. See? Always get see the comments when I'm going on an attack. It's 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 like it's like the FIFA gods know Dylan needs to do something. So let's let's give him an opportunity now when he's flustered. Calabria. Oh, it's not the best ball. Uh, I'm checking out the money stuff uh, as that's interesting. WWE, no matter, uh, will always feel like home. I was enjoying AEW, but show length incident uh, happened, and uh, their matches go on and most go past peak. Yeah, I think that's a really good way of summing it up, actually, JJ, about AEW. There's definitely some good stuff there, like in terms of matches, and they've, they've got some very good talent, but there's just something about how their shows are, you know, how, how, how the shows are kind of structured and stuff. I mean, like, AEW apparently are only doing a brand split because half the talent don't get on. Oh, oh, that's the jammiest fucking goal. That is the jammiest goal I've ever fucking conceded in my life. Right, now we need to make some more changes. Right, JJ, you have to come on now. And I'm going to bring on Ferreira. Oh, Ferguson, listen, he's, he's done his best. He got the goal, but uh, the first goal. But I just think we need a bit more cutting edge up front. 4-2. As JJ said, never a dull moment. I wish we could get that on like our crest. Clone United, and then underneath it, never a dull moment. But you know what, you know what I can't wait for, though, is EA FC, the first installment of it. I can't wait. I've got some... I, there's some ideas that I wanted to do this year that I just never got around to, and then I've, FIFA, I've had a love-hate relationship with FIFA this year. Which is most, to be honest with you, it's been about 10% love and 90% hate. And I just didn't want to do it. But hopefully, EAFC, we can see some improvements and we can get some of these career modes done. And speaking of done, fuck this game. 5-2. Oh, we can see fucking great. We can see the fucking sixth for the fourth fucking time this season. Oh, Jesus Christ. We keep one clean sheet and then we shit the fucking bed. Right, AEW wanted to create a happy camp as WWE at the time wasn't, but the tables have turned. Yeah, I think AEW was, you know, I think if you're going to base a company, you know, purely off what WWE is doing, it's never a good sign. And I'm not saying that's entirely what AEW was built off of, but a lot of it was what AEW were built off of. United have jumped above us, what the fuck? I suppose they've played a game extra. But, um... I think AEW, like, they, they had that new company. I think in football we call it a new manager bounce. AEW had that new company bounce. We're playing in the purple kill. It's, I haven't played it yet, so let's do it. Um, So I, I think that was always going to play a factor as well. I think the, the candle was going to be blown out eventually. And I think it's happened, you know, probably sooner than they would have liked. But look... You know, at least there's more places for wrestlers to make money, which is always a good sign. Right, Arsenal are rotating a bit here. I know this is only a probable lineup, but they normally get it spot on. Turner is in goal, and not Aaron Ramsdale, the Turley United number one. Uh, 
Uh, also too much talent, even for the amount of shows Tony is doing. The cycle, uh, the cycle system with 90, 95% of talent, you can't get invested that much as they'll be off TV months at a time. Yeah, I've heard that criticism about AEW a good bit, that they do just have far too much talent. Listen, WWE have had that problem as well a lot of the time. You know? But anyways... It's the biggest game of the stream, Arsenal at the Emirates. I'm not an Arsenal fan, far from it, but I do love playing at the Emirates. It is a very aesthetically pleasing stadium, uh, and I do enjoy. I do enjoy playing here. And we're playing in our lovely. Oh, I really like this kit, the purple kit. It's our first time using it. Obviously, last year we didn't have the option to use third kits, which has been a big frustration with FIFA. Like. FIFA have a habit, like EA I should say, have a habit of giving you the bare minimum every year and then adding on to it, you know, a a as the next few years go on to make it look like they're putting in the effort. Oh, good save by Schmeichel. Not the first time we've heard that against Arsenal. A proper save from a proper strike. I'll see myself out. Purple kit, channel the purple warrior, Scott Steiner. I tell you what, the numbers don't lie, JJ. And they spell disaster for Arsenal here at the Emirates. And just as so I say that, they nearly went 1 0 up. <laughs> Funnily enough, I did get the uh, Steiner Brother pack today in WWE 2K23. So I was playing a couple of tag matches with the Steiner Brothers earlier on in my lunch break. I work from home on Thursdays. So. That's great. Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm always working from home, which is nice. Means on my lunch break, get to put on some WWE 2K. Because with FIFA, honestly, I've only been enjoying FIFA this year when I've been streaming it. To be perfectly honest. Oh, well done, Alex. Well done, Alex. JJ. Oh, the power shot just... Took too long to power up. And Arsenal retain possession. I haven't done an Arsenal career mode in a while, but as much as like it pains me to say it, Arsenal were always a fun team to do a career mode with. I think I just did so many Arsenal career modes that it just kind of got a bit boring for me. Um, but they, they have always been a fun team to do a career mode. And as I said, I do like the Emirates, which pains me to say as well, because I don't like the fact that I like Arsenal Stadium. Uh, with that said, I did like Highbury as well. You know. But you know, as much as I don't like Arsenal, I am praying that they win the league this season. Not because I like them, but because I don't want Man City to win it. Good save again by Schmeichel. Oh, probably just heard my neck crack there. That was nice. He's given a free kick. I mean, he's put someone on the line. It's going to be Polinia. Oh my god, he took that lot quicker than I thought, but Polinia managed to get rid of it. It's a goal kick as well. Somehow, we haven't conceded yet, but it's been a stressful 25 minutes. Arsenal have had a couple of chances now. I think they've dominated possession. Oh. Oh. Highbury on this day is a baked place to go. I actually saw... Who was it? I saw someone on Instagram recently who was actually at an Arsenal game pretty recently, and they were walking through what used to be Highbury Stadium. So it is cool that you can... Oh! 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 Oh, Polinia, he's done it! Get in! 1-0! <coughs> Half an hour gone! We've absorbed all the pressure, and we've taken the lead here at the Emirates. But this could be a massive result if we get it. Brilliant finish. Clawing United 1-0 up here at the Emirates. I nearly scored. Oh, it landed perfectly for Paulinha. Beats Turner in goal. And we're 1-0 up here. I think that's his first goal for the club. But I, I did see I saw someone who was at the Emirates recently, but when they put up like they put up the pictures on Instagram and I could see um Oh, it's his second goal! It's his second goal. Uh, I did see them walking through 
uh, Highbury, which is a, I think it's a housing estate now, but it's mental that you can walk through it and think, Jesus, you know, this is where so many famous games happened over the years. It's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. I love seeing photos from like the early 2000s to now. Yeah, I love looking at those photos as, as well. It's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Oh, good save by Schmeichel. He's having to put in a very good performance today. <coughs> He's wearing a bit of purple as well, Schmeichel. Well, you know, more pink, but there's a bit of a, t a hint of purple there. Ferreira to Tarl. Oh, we've spread Arsenal wide open here. Alex. Oh, I was in two minds about whether I'd square it or shoot. But Turner makes a very good save. Just the one goal uh, for now. I think that was Porig. Oh no, it was back with the header, which just goes wide. Here they come now, Martinelli. Immobile. Ah. Uh, Arsenal equalise. 1-1. One, one. You can't say it. They don't deserve a goal in this half. But I was hoping we could go into halftime 1-0 up. Ugh. It's mad that people are living in where peak Arsenal players were turning up. Yeah. Imagine that. Imagine being an Arsenal fan and living in that estate going, Jesus. I'm My bedroom is five yards away from where Henri... Scored so many great goals over the years. Like literally, Champions League semi-finals have taken place in that stadium. And now people live meters away from that very that very turf. God Schmeichel, his distribution is not great. Oh, let's not go into the half losing. Oh my god! <laughs> I love Porig to bits. But fuck me, he loves giving away penalties. And he's giving away another one here. But that's so soft. Ah, oh, it's such a soft penalty. Oh. And it looks like we're going to be going into the half 2-1 down. Immobile won the penalty. He's going to take the penalty. Oh, but he's going to miss the penalty! Get in there! Right, let's just go into the half... Level. <sighs> Brilliant save by Schmeichel. 1-1 one, one at half time. We're still in this. Oh. I was getting worried there for a second. I just really hurt my finger there. That was annoying. Arsenal won. Klein won. <sighs> God. We were in front for 10 minutes. Before Immobile equalised. I'll slap his head for missing that penalty. I tell you what. Oh, wait. Okay, never mind. Uh, I tell you what, though. Some of the standards of penalty taking from left footers in real life recently has been shocking. Between Saka, Salah, Haaland. It's been some bad penalty misses. Oh, good man, good man, good man. Good man. Oh, just couldn't get it out of his feet. But the penalty he took was abysmal. Now, Kimmich, to be fair, obviously did score a penalty. I didn't see the second half of that game, to be honest. Uh, I watched a bit of the first half, and then I was just like, look, Bayern aren't going to turn this around. They, I think they had to score in the first half to have any chance. And then, obviously, I, I got the notification to say they were 1-0 up, and I was like, yeah, I don't think I want to watch this. It's funny, actually, in the... Oh, I thought that was going in. Last season, when they played Real Madrid in the semi-final, in the second leg... When Mares put them 1-0 up, a couple of minutes later, I remember turning it off going, oh, I, j I don't want to see this. I just don't. And I had Mark Goldberg's watch-along uh, playing. And then I heard that Real Madrid were after equalising. Oh, wait, 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 wait. JJ! Oh, JJ! At the Emirates! Well, Ruud van Nistelrooy scored so many great goals against Arsenal over the years. But I tell you what, now the English van Nistelrooy has done it. 2-1. Lovely finish. Chavez. 
who's been in great form. Some lovely footwork. And JJ with the finish. You love to see it. You love to see it. 2 1. But uh, yeah, at Goldbridge, I had his watch along on. I went to turn it off, and he was like, oh, Real Madrid have equalized. Now they still had to score another one to, to be level on aggregate. So I was like, oh, let's tune back in. And then the rest was history. Real Madrid obviously went on to not only knock out Man City, but they went on to win the whole bloody thing. And it stopped a all, um, a, 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 an all-English final between Man City and uh, Liverpool, which is also great. I didn't watch any of the second legs with the English teams. Yeah, I... I I did watch a little bit of the Chelsea one, but again, it was just like, ugh, like, I don't want Chelsea to turn this around, and I also just don't really care about this game. And yeah, the Man City one, I watched a little bit of it, but... Oh, no. No! Oh, good interception, but Arsenal still have it, but we get it back. That's a foul ref, come on. Apparently not, but we do get the throw in. Porig. Receives it from Ferreira. Is back. And now Calabria. Cullen. Chavez. Paulinha. Gallardo. You can probably tell I'm a bit nervous. This would be a huge result for us. Because we've been battered so many times by the bigger teams. If we could get a win here away from home against Arsenal as well. I, I'm sorry. Is Ramsdale on the bench? Why are they playing Matt Turner? They're playing their cup goalkeeper in a game that they kind of need three points in. He like it's such a what you have an eighty four rated goalkeeper on the bench. It's so stupid. Like <coughs> maybe we need to rescue Ramsdale and bring him back. You know he's a Tarly United hero. Who will ever forget that last last day of the Premier League season where he made so many important saves when we beat Newcastle? I was only watching that actually recently, reminiscing in some old times. Oh Chavez, who's been brilliant. He deserves a goal. For some reason went with his left foot. His right foot even. He should have gone with his left. And it's a good save to be fair by Turner. Just as after I was talking a bit of shit about him. So that's karma. Oh it's a good save. Pulling you looking for another one today. Is Rob holding. Now Immobile, Tierney, oh, oh, we've done well there, we've done well there, come on, let's hold on now, I just realised I haven't, I don't, I, normally I like to make subs, but I just feel like, I don't really feel like there is anyone we can bring on at this stage that's actually going to help us. We're just not at that stage yet where we have that amount of depth. Schmeichel makes a comfortable save. Nine minutes left. We're still 2-1 up. Oh, that's a poor ball. Is JJ. Oh, he's done really well there. Ferreira. Intercepted again. Oh, fuck. 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 It's out for a goal kick or a corner. It's a corner. Okay, we'll make some changes. Uh, <coughs> I'll read out that chat there now in just a sec. Uh, let me just make the changes. Schuler can come off for Chavez. Uh, Ferreira can come off for Afif. Afif, I still don't know how to say his name. And, yeah, that's all I'm going to do for now. I've gone back to the start of Charlie United just to refresh what happened, especially in the earlier seasons. Yeah, sometimes I do, you know, when I'm busy at work or whatever... And I just want to put something on in the background, or if I'm just bored playing, you know, games, and I want... Sometimes when I play games, I like to have something on in the background. I'll just throw on a random episode of Turley and Idol and watch it back. Oh, it was a good time. It was a good time. It was one of those career modes. I, I, I didn't want it to end, you know? That's a sign of a great career mode, where you're, where you're sad when it's coming to the end. But obviously with this one, we're just getting started. Oh, Tarl, I'm in here. Oh, it's a corner. It is a corner. Um, yeah, we'll waste a bit of time with this sub here. Take off Calabria and bring on Madsen. The 
Oh, poor, I can tell you what. He nearly got in the end of that. Tarl. Now back. Schuler off the bench. Oh, he nearly wrapped it up. He nearly wrapped it up. We can still make one more change. Again, I'm just wasting time now. Uh, I feel kind of bad for Fernandez because I did talk a lot of shit about him. We'll bring him on just to give him an all appearance for the final 30 seconds or so and to stop him from complaining. He's a good player, Fernandez. It's just, you know, we just have better players in front of him. But he does get an appearance here at the Emirates in our lovely purple kit. <coughs> oh, Porra nearly made a 3 1. Oh, pulling you. Oh. It should be 3 1, but it doesn't matter. We get the 2 1 win. Oh, it's a big result here at the Emirates, especially after we get whacked by Newcastle. We are such a weird team. But that is a huge three points here against Arteta's men. Could possibly be champions in real life in a matter of weeks, depending on some results. And here we are. 2-1 uh, winners, I should say. At the Emirates again. I have playlists like Tarly Knight and other playlists just to help me sleep. I'd... I'm kind of embarrassed to admit you, AJ. I have put on episodes of Target United as I've gone to sleep. <laughs> Which, like, it's fine for you. Because, you know, because you're obviously, um, <coughs> you know, you're the assistant coach, as I say. And, you know, you are um, a big supporter of, of the of the series. But I don't know, does it just sound vain that I listen back to my own episodes, um, you know, as a way of, you know, going going to sleep. I don't know, is that bad for someone who, you know, isn't... Or, sorry, who's making the content, I should say. I don't know. I don't know. I don't care. Fuck it. Life's too short. Anyways, uh, the Youth Academy. Patrick Curry. Yeah, he's probably not going to be good enough. Tyler Gibbs doesn't look terrible, but meh. Uh, Peters. Mm, he looks okay. Jansen looks decent. Gormley looks like he could be fantastic. Uh, Adams is uh, developing quite well. Cody Scott looks pretty exciting. I know we don't play with the cam now, but I think we will eventually. Uh, Rainey looks like he's decent. Davies, he's okay. You know, he's decent. Yeah, I mean, they're pretty similar, to be fair. Uh, and Kennedy, eh, I'm just not really feeling it too much. I think we'll leave that go. Right, we've got Bournemouth up next. I think I'm going to sim this game um, and see what happens. Yeah, we can just sim with the team that we have. Couple of tired legs, but hopefully nothing too bad. And we get another clean sheet. A 3-0 win. Colin Ferreira. And of course, the English fan, Nistel Roy JJ, with the goals. In the battle of the red and black teams, Clone United come out on top. Lovely, lovely three points. And that brings us up to sixth after 15 games. Even though we've conceded 40 goals. 40 goals in, in 15 games. That is <coughs> insane. Evan Ferguson. No problem at all, pal. How has he still not gone up? But now we can check the stats. So, Schmeichel, Gallardo, Polinia, Tarl and Colin have played every game. JJ has only missed one game. I do remember that we rested you for a League Cup game. But you've got 15 goals in 17 appearances. That is insane. With four assists on top of that. So, 19 goal contributions in 17 games. Some going. Alex with five goals and one assist. Ferreira, three goals and three assists. Ferguson, three goals and one assist. Uh, Paulinha, two and two. I've got two goals and four assists. Not terrible, but not amazing. Uh, Schuler's doing well, two and three. Uh, Calabria even has a goal. Porig has one. We're doing quite well. Helping you out at the top. Couple of clean sheets in this episode. JJ, you've done more than help, pal. You've dominated. You've dominated. And it's been nice to get a few clean sheets. 100%. Um, like, I, I'm in two minds now. Because I kind of want to play this game against Chelsea right now whilst I'm feeling good. And they're in fifth, so if we win this, we can climb up into a Europa League spot. But I'm also like, oh, but that's a big game for the next episode to start with. But, oh, I don't know. I feel like I kind of want to play this. Let me just have a look at the calendar. See, so yeah, we've got Chelsea... Then we've got West Ham, Leicester, Spurs, apparently on Christmas Day, because that makes sense. Bournemouth again. You know what? December is a long month. Let's play it. Let's play it. Fuck it. We've got the momentum. 
we're in good form. I think we play this game against Chelsea. Not with partly clear weather, though, because that gives that annoying shadow uh, that Stamford Bridge has. So we'll play an overcast. Just because it's a bit easier on the eye. They need to fix that, though. Some stadiums are impossible to play uh, to play out in the day. It's very annoying. So I think, you know, the, the starting 11 is doing quite well at the moment. Porg has gone up to a 79, which is good to see. Um... <coughs> JJ, I think you actually were on 77 on the last episode, so you've gone up to 78, which is great. Alex is at 79, I'm at 78. The team is growing quite nicely. Schmeichel did drop by one since we've signed him, but he's still 81 rated. It's not a, it's not something to complain about too much. Ferguson, I'd like to see go up to 70, um, just because it would just be more pleasing on the eye. But he's proven that he can be a good backup. Uh, and yeah, I think we go with uh, that team. So let's hope we can get another big result away from home in London. It was Arsenal last time. Can it be Chelsea this time? Let's hope so. 13 goals from JJ so far. The competition record of 32. Listen, I'm sure... I mean, Tarl broke it a couple of times. JJ, I'm sure you'll get there as well. This season, I'm not so sure. Just because I don't know if uh, the quality around you is going to help out too much. But I'm sure one day we will get there. We will get there. Right. Back in the Ireland kit. And hopefully back with another three points. If we could end this episode in fifth, that would be crazy. But again, baby steps. Baby steps. That's, uh, let's just focus on the task at hand at the moment, which is having a good start. Oh... I had the line in my head and all. I was going to say, what better start than getting an early goal? But it was a good block in the end. Oh, and Chelsea are right here at Madueke. He's got the pace. Oh, it's not a great ball, though, but Sterling will keep it. And Calabria will intercept. And we go on the the break here. That's a good ball if Ferreira can get there, and he can. It's Tarl back to Ferreira. Who has a very similar run to Raheem Sterling, which is kind of funny. Oh, I thought he was injured there for a second. It was a good tackle. There's Fofana. Oh, now it's Reese James. Another former Charlie United player, I think. We did have Reese James, didn't we? I'm fairly confident that we did. I can't even remember. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we did have Reese James. Towards the end, or at the very end, at least. No, never mind. Never mind. That was a different career mode. That was a different creative club career mode I did last year. Never mind. Yeah, I did one before. I did Tardy United. I did do another creative club career mode. But I didn't stream it. It was like, it was like at the very start of FIFA 22. And I remember we did sign Reese James on that. <clears throat> that was a... Uh, that was when I did up my former local team that I used to play for. Uh, it was a fun career mode, but I never actually won the Champions League in it, which was kind of annoying. But Tardy United obviously fixed that. And Tardy United was a lot more fun. <laughs> oh, that's a great ball. JJ. Well, Van Nistelrooy did score here in his first season with Manchester United, and JJ does it in his first season with Klein United. What a finish. What a fantastic finish. We take the lead at Stamford Bridge. Oh, my God. We have been playing some very good football. Like, that Newcastle game. That was probably an error on my part. I probably rotated a bit too many players. But I still don't think we should have got whacked 6-2. But we beat Arsenal with a fantastic performance. We're beating Chelsea here. JJ, just absolutely the man in form. Oh, I'm loving every second of it. Absolutely loving every second of it. 14 goals in 16 games. It's a brilliant tally to have at this stage of the season in the league. I'd, I'd love, I would love nothing more than to qualify for a European competition this season. Even if it was the Conference League, I'd, I'd happily take it. <coughs> Obviously, I'd love to get more. I mean, I'd love to get Champions League, even though maybe it would be a bit too, too much too soon. But Europa League or Conference League, I think, would be very good. Obviously, we did win the Conference League in... Uh, the second to last season of how the fuck did that happen <sighs> that 
let's move on. We did win the Conference League in the second to last uh, season with Charlie United. Avoid that Belgian team if you can get the Conference League. Oh, Charleroi or Charleroi, however you say it. Man, I'm, I was the original plan was to do a career mode with them for a bit, and I did start it, but uh, again, just things just got in the way, and we never got around to it. That is something I will have to revisit though one day. Oh my god, that was, was a five-two. I think they beat us at home, and then in the the return game we drew three all in the group stage. I was really hoping we'd get them again, but we never we never did. But uh, god, they were. Uh, they absolutely wiped the floor with us. But I remember that second game, the 3-all, we had to come from 3-0 down. And they topped the group, remember? They topped the group. <coughs> but uh, obviously the Europa League was the only competition that we didn't win as well. So that would be nice to win it, to kind of make up for that by winning it in this career mode. Oh, oh Ferreira was nearly in there. So that... Oh, just over the bar. He thought he was playing Gaelic football there for a second with a shot like that. Gaelic football is an Irish sport for those of you that don't know. I used to play it when I was younger. Even though I'm not a huge fan of Gaelic football. I don't think it's very fun to watch. People from Kerry would probably get mad at me for saying that, but I'm not from Kerry, so there you go. Oh, good save. Very good save. And that's a brilliant ball out to Dylan Tarl, but he just couldn't get there. Oh, good tackle. But it's funny, I said people from Kerry. I mean, Gaelic football is actually quite big in Cork as well. But her, I, I would still consider Cork more of a hurling county. So f for those of you who aren't Irish and probably think I'm just speaking gibberish at the moment. Uh, some of you have... Oh, good tackle. Oh, I tell you what. Could have closed him down there. Some of you have probably heard of GAA, which is the Gaelic Athletic Association here in Ireland, which uh, has a few uh, different sport, has three different sports, hurling, Gaelic football and handball. Uh, I've never really seen handball much. Uh, I can't even really remember what it actually is, but it's part of the GAA. It's the least popular sport in the GAA. But you have hurling, which is that sport you see with 15 players with sticks. Um, and then you have Gaelic football, which is the football equivalent of that sport. And uh, in Ireland, you've got some counties that are more hurling, and you've got some counties that are more Gaelic football. And even though Cork is more of a hurling county, like I grew up in Cloyne, obviously, this is Cloyne United, and Cloyne is definitely more of a hurling town, or hurling village, I should say, than it is a football village. Overall, Cork is, you know, Cork is mostly hurling. But we're actually quite, uh, we're actually quite different. Uh, quite different? We're actually quite uh, decent, I should say. Uh, at, at, at both sports. Are these sports in the OSQ? I don't know what that is. I'm not going to lie, JJ. I don't know what that is. If you wouldn't mind explaining that for me. Wouldn't, wouldn't mind explaining that for an uninformed man like myself. Hurling is a good sport. A dodgeball reference. Ah, shit. That reference went right over my head. <coughs> But uh, Gaelic football is, uh, yeah, to kind of, you know, uh, touch off that point, Gaelic football is, mm, I was, uh, you know, I, I was probably better at Gaelic football than I was at hurling. But Gaelic football is just not a fun sport. It looks like a combination of, like, rugby, you know, soccer, for lack of a better word, and, uh, oh shit. Uh, and basketball. But yeah, people in Kerry love it. Kerry, Mayo, and where else? Dublin. Dublin would be... I think Dublin would actually be a much more Gaelic football county than it would be hurling, to be honest. Uh, have you seen... Or sorry, have you watched Dodgeball or True Underdog Story? I think I have, but when I was very young, if I'm thinking of the right one. Uh, there's a, honestly, there's a lot of movies I've never seen. And there's some that if I have seen them, I haven't seen them in years. Like I, for someone who has who is involved in acting, I'm not a big movie watcher or a big TV sh uh, series watcher. I really, I, I don't watch an awful lot. I've never seen an episode of Game of Thrones. Uh, I've only seen clips of Breaking Bad. 
Uh, I'm not watching Succession. I just don't watch a lot of telly. Oh, no! No! Oh, maybe I've played one too many games here. <coughs> With Ben Stiller, they have so many quality cameos. One of my favorite movies. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I have seen it. But as I say, not for a very long time. Not for a very long time. But I do remember enjoying it, and I, I've heard a few people say that. Like, I work with people who are, you know, like my boss. Uh, he's a, like, oh, shit! Oh, my God. See, th that's one of the most annoying things about FIFA this year, is goals like that. You know, we concede one, and then they go right up the other end. And they fucking go right up the other... Oh, it's, oh, it's so frustrating. Oh, with so much for being in the top five. I've never seen Game of Thrones or Walking Dead. Yeah, Walking Dead's another one I've never seen. Uh, well, like you know, I've I've seen I've seen it on, but I've never sat down and watched <coughs> an episode. And I just have no desire to do it. Now, one series I do want to watch is Ted Lasso, because obviously it's about football, and I've I've heard people who 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 aren't even football fans say they've loved it. Breaking Bad. Yeah, I've never seen Breaking Bad either. Um. You know, or, you know, I've I've never like watched full episode. I remember Alex, my cousin, who's in this career mode, Alex Cullen. He was uh, watching it before, and I was just like, I don't have any interest in this. Hannibal, I think, was the last series I really got into. Or there was a very good series here in Ireland called Love Hate. Um, that was very good. That was a very very good uh, film, or film uh, series, I should say. But yeah, I'm not a big TV series guy. I never really have been. See, with Hannibal, I just thought the, the backstory, the character was interesting, so I, I tuned into it for uh, a bit. And uh, Mads Mikkelsen's one of my favourite actors. Oh, good ball. Oh, what the fuck was that? Doesn't matter, though. Alex gets the assist. 3-2. We're still in this. Lovely finish by Ferreira. Alex with the run. JJ did really well to uh, make sure he didn't touch it. Because I think he was in an offside position. So great awareness from him. An unofficial assist. It's 3-2. I'm not really a big series guy. I think everyone talks about... And there's always been somewhat of pressure to watch. And I don't. Yeah, that's kind of what me. I think you know, people hype up things so much. And I'm just like... Nah. Like, another series I haven't seen at, at all. Apart from clips. Is Young Rock. And that's something I should be all over. But no, I've only seen clips of it. Only ever seen clips of it. Come on, let's see if we can escape with a draw here. That's got to be offside. Apparently not. Felix... Michael has to put it over the bar. We'll make a change in midfield. Just cause really, I don't feel like there's any other change I can make. Oh, my God. Oh, what a save! By Schmeichel. I watched the first episode, but then building towards a Roman Reigns match when he wasn't going to have a match, I laughed. Yeah, and I, I, I've seen a couple of clips of it, but uh, I, I do need to... Uh, I do, I, 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 Ted Lasso and Young Rock are the two series that I need to... I need to just get on. But I'm not even sure like what, what to watch it on. I'm sure there's a way of finding... Actually, I'm sure that my manager shared a website with me recently that has TV series that you can watch. Oh, yeah, I think uh, this is going to be an L that we're going to take here. Madueke, that's a good ball. Schmeichel, can we get one last attack? Oh, probably not. I think the referee is going to blow here in a second. JJ goes on the run. 
Oh, he's done really well there, JJ, but he's got nobody in support. Tarl. Paulinha. Ah, oh, good block. Ted Lasso, I think I will watch. Like you said, non -fo football fans enjoy, and that makes me want to watch it. Yeah, apparently, it's very, very good. It's very, very good. So I do need to check that out. Oh, we do taste defeat to Chelsea. We won't be jumping up into a European spot. That's so disappointing. Oh, God. That is a bit disappointing. We stay in ninth. Still, though, I, I think if, if you told me after this fucking shocking start we had of the season that this is where we'd be by now, I would have taken it. West Ham up next. Where are they in the table? Let's have a look. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, West Ham are fourth. Am I going to play it? Let's have a look at the calendar again because I've already forgotten. West Ham and then Leicester. You know, yeah, let's play this West Ham game. We'll sim the Leicester game and we'll leave it with the Tottenham game. I think uh, that's probably the best way of going about this. Uh, the only change I'll make, JJ can stay in, that's fine. Uh, Afif can start just because Pereira is a bit tired, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give Madsen a game for Calabria just because he's a wee bit jaded. Kent is gonna come in. Fernandez, I will play over back, and yeah, let's let's do that and hope that we can excuse me get a win, and then sim the Leicester game, and we'll see what happens there. I think it's just because I'm not tired as well. Normally I'd be absolutely shattered by now. But, um... I'm actually not doing too bad. Not doing too bad. And it makes me want to play even more. Which is good. And I think I, I owe it to, to this series. Because obviously I haven't been able to get on here as much as I would have liked. <coughs> just been one of those weeks really like work has been kind of weird this week and obviously Tuesday nights I'm busy with jiu-jitsu and stuff and then uh, Wednesday I just honestly I was just too tired oh and you know Monday I did attempt to stream and it just wouldn't happen for me and Tuesday uh, I oh there we go we're in here good ball oh uh, Tuesday it was pretty much the same, but I probably just gave up on it a bit too quickly because again I was just knackered. But now I, I feel like I have a bit more energy. Tiredness is hitting me a small, like a, a little bit, but like I'm sure by the end of this game, I, I'll be more tired. But it's like, you know, whilst I have a bit of energy, like, let's keep going. Good save by Schmeichel, but I feel like his saves always ricochet out to the opposition. Like there, like we we got the benefit of the doubt, but most of the time I feel like it just goes right to a fucking opposition player and it's very annoying oh that's a good ball get rid of that good man oh thank god tomorrow's Friday that's all I can say though this has been a bit of a long week to be honest and I'm uh ready to have a couple of days off. Keep that in. Here's JJ. Now Gallardo. Back with JJ. Oh, it's a tight angle. Oh, it's a good save. Oh, but it just wouldn't fall for us. I just realised I never changed Polinia's number as well. Oh, fuck it. Look. It's actually not bothering me as much as I thought it would. Friday is my short day at work. Always look forward to finishing an early afternoon. Oh, that sounds so nice. Technically, technically, Friday is my short day as well. But it's only a half an hour difference. So normally I finish at half five. But on Fridays we finish at five. Oh, well done, Colin. Well done. Oh, Chavez gets the finish. He's been in brilliant form lately. 1-0. He's been a brilliant signing. A free agent signing as well. You can't go wrong with those. I love when the free agent signings turn out to be quality. Alex going on a brilliant run. 
getting another assist. Chavez with the finish. Clyde United 1-0 up here against West Ham. <coughs> well, I'd love to finish this with a win. I really would. If we win this, I probably won't even bother simming the Leicester game. I think we'll actually just leave it for the next episode! Because I want to leave it on a positive note. Because I think the Leicester game is away as well. So I actually think what we might do is, if we win this one, we'll leave it with the Leicester game. Um, and we'll probably play the highlights of it or something in the next episode. Here's Danny Ings. Oh, Paqueta. Oof. Just over the bar. Deflected. I was hoping we get a corner out of that, but it wasn't to be. Just saw United went one up there through Bruno Fernandes. Which is good to see. Even when I'm not using United in a career mode, I obviously want to see us doing well. West Ham are on the attack here. Ooh, it's a good clearance away. Tarl goes back to Schmeichel. Not the best clearance in the world. West Ham have it in a promising position. Oh, Fernandez, though. Jesus Christ, he's actually playing really well. God, now I feel bad that I haven't really been giving him a chance lately. He actually feels, even though he's a little bit lower rated than back, he just feels a bit more of a presence. Oh, what a ball by Tarl. Into JJ. Oh, I went to loop it over the keeper, but it didn't quite happen. Oh, and it wouldn't fall for Chavez. Just won't break for us. I won't fall for us, I should say. When we get an opportunity like that. But I tell you what, if that was West Ham, oh my God, it would have ricocheted to Lucas Paqueta and it would have been 1-1. Uh, oh, JJ just couldn't... <coughs> just couldn't get... Uh... And then, the... oops, I didn't mean to... Pause that. Fernandez has got your back. If you know, you know. Yeah, no, he's, he's playing really well. And I'm sorry, back. But, uh... God, I actually... I don't know, I feel like I might play him in the next couple of games. Give him a, give him a run. I just... I, I don't know, like... Obviously, the last game we played him at left side at centre-back. And I thought because he had four-star weak foot, he would have been alright. But he just felt a bit out of place against Newcastle. But in this game, he's... Actually done quite well. Oh, ref, are you blowing the whistle there for? We had another attack. Right, 1-0 at halftime. It's a good uh, position to be in. Let's hope we can capitalise on it. Does West Ham kick us off here? exciting as well because in the next episode oh fuck off linesman that's a soft free kick in the next episode we will have the January transfer window now we're not probably going to do a lot of uh, <coughs> a lot of business in it but you never know something might pop up oh well done JJ oh I'm lucky Chewbacca <laughs> I'm not even going to attempt to make the Chewbacca sound because I will not even get remotely close to it. Oh, sh oh, I thought they were going to break clean through there. And they still might. Oh, brilliant tackle. Paqueta. Couldn't get there. JJ will put it out to Afif. I'm just going to call him Afif. Back to JJ. Good save by Ariola. Chavez is ball in. Headed away. Tarl is going to receive it. But Porig. Oh, my nose. Gallardo. Afif is on, I think he is. No. Yes, he is. Thought he was going to be offside there for a second. Alex. Oh, JJ was about to let one rip. Not like that. <coughs> but he gets intercepted right at the last second. And they are on the attack here. I was just going to say, where's Calabria? He's not even playing. Madsen's at right back. Oh, but Madsen, I tell you what, very good interception. 
He's done really well there. The right back who looks about four foot ten. Oh, West Hammer doing well at cutting out those passes. His Danny Ings. Apologies if I did let one rip. You're all good, man. You're all good. We got to do it. It's a natural part of human life. I think there was actually... I can't remember what episode it was, but I went back to watch a Tardy United episode before, and I'm fairly sure there's one where you can hear me let one rip. Which was kind of funny. Oh. Oh, Danny Ings is in. Oh, Fernandez, he can't get there. Danny Ings, what a save by Schmeichel. Oh. Well, it's in his genes to be a fantastic goalkeeper, but that was a very, very good save. I tell you what, I thought he was going to go the wrong way for that one there for a second, but he gets there. I think I might have to make some changes in a minute just because we do have another game against Leicester coming up shortly, so i got to be tactical with it, but we'll wait until the ball goes out of play. Madsen, who's actually, he was quite quiet for most of the game, but he's come into it in the last few minutes and he's done quite well. Alex, who may be one of the players I'll have to take off. Here's Turl. Gallardo, or Jalardo, maybe is how you actually say it. I'm not too sure. Oh, it's a good interception. West Ham get it again. 15 minutes to go. Oh, that's a good ball. Can Madsen... Oh, God, that was a bad tackle. And Madsen very well could be seeing red here. I really hope not. Oh, it's only a yellow. Okay. Came right in behind him. That didn't look good for a second. Right, let's uh, have a look at making some changes. Uh, JJ will give you a rest to make sure you're okay for Leicester. I'll take myself off for Schuler, And I think... Mm, I'll tell you what, Madsen is actually quite tired now. I am going to... Yeah, I'm going to bring on Calabria. Alex is actually not too tired, so he can stay on. Calabria. Listen, he's only coming on for the final 13 minutes. They're taking Danny Ings off, but they're bringing on Skamaka. And we're going to make a few changes as well. Just with a few tired legs. He was tired and he was on a yellow. That's not a great combination. So it was best that we took him off. Please win that header. Header there. Schuler is only just on. He's got all the energy in the world. How the fuck did he lose that? It's Paqueta. Schuler. Another good interception. Paulinha. Out to Calabria. Alex. Oh. Oh, I thought he was going to get there and he could have squared it for Ferguson. But it wasn't to be. And a good ball out here now to Cornet. Oof, right into the arms of Kasper Schmeichel though. Only four minutes left. Here's a thief. Ring the police, it's a thief. That was a terrible joke, I apologise. Uh, Suchek with a good ball across to Bowen only a couple of minutes to go West Ham passing it around us here Bowen does really well to get beyond his man but we get it back Ferguson all oh, well done he's done a good job there of holding it up oh my f fucking god Oh, no. No, 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 no. Kasper Schmeichel, I could fucking shag you right now. God, that was a bit extreme. I apologise for that. Uh, we're going to bring on Kent. He badly needs an appearance. And back can come on for Fernandez. Fernandez has had a good performance. Uh, he's just a bit, wee bit tired. Would you look at that, Kevin? It's the police. And we're going to make a couple of changes at the back. <laughs> Which is, you know, no pun, no pun intended. <coughs> I 
Here we go. They've brought up their keeper. Oh, that's not a bad ball. But Kasper Schmeichel will get there. And it's another clean sheet. And another three points for Klein United. I feel like I've definitely said Turn United at one stage in this episode by accident. But fuck it. Listen, we're still learning. Oh, that's a big three points. West Ham, we're in fourth coming into this game. And we made a couple of changes. And we still get the result. Oh, you love to see that. You love to see that. Chavez with the only goal of the game. Another win and another, another clean sheet. Indeed, JJ. I'm going to do a post-match interview after that as well. I feel like that's one of those games that you know we need to kind of give ourselves a pat on the back. Because that, uh, that was tough. And fair play to Fernandez. Came in and played pretty much the full 90 minutes. After not playing a full 90 minutes for a while. And uh, put in a very good performance. Every player did his job. 100%. 100%. Uh, that answer was so long that it actually went off my TV screen and you won but West Ham made it tough in midfield didn't they uh, we never let up we never let up Bowen did have a very good game for them and he made it difficult but still and Fernandez is a lot happier now which is great now he put in a really good performance there I tell you what 77 rated <coughs> can't remember how old he is let's have a quick look because I tell you what that was a very impressive performance He's 27, so listen, he's not going to grow much more. But 27, 77 rated, it's not a bad player for us to have at this stage in the career mode. But Colloch, oh, he's 29. I forgot he was even in the team. So that's the thing, we, we do have some players here that I would like to give more of, of a chance to. But the only thing is, is that we're just not playing in that many competitions as of right now. I don't think they've made the FA Cup draw yet, have they? No, but the FA Cup game will be here on either the Saturday or the Sunday. I think... Hopefully we can get like a lower league team because I'd love to actually play the second team. Not even Sim. I'd love to just put out a completely rotated team and just see what happens. So hopefully uh, we can do that. But let's Sim up to the Leicester game and leave it here. We won't even we won't even Sim it like uh, right now. We'll wait till the next episode. I think we'll play the highlights. But let's just have a quick look at the uh, Premier League standings. So eighth place, not a bad place for us to be at this excuse me at this stage of the season. After 17 games. Oh my god. Bloody hell. It's got so gassy there. My apologies. We are how many points off the top four now with that win? We're only three points off top four. But as you can tell, our goal difference is just shocking. I mean, even if you go down the table. Like Brentford. Our bottom of the league, right? With a minus 11 goal difference. And we're eighth. With a minus 10. We've conceded 43. They've only conceded 30. We have conceded by far the most goals in the league. And that's all down to our shocking start to the season. Like, I do need to count that. How many games have we conceded? Six. If we go back. So, one, two. Where is it? Three. Three games we've conceded six. But, like, you know, four to Brentford. Uh, four to Fulham, even though we fucking won. Four to United. You know, it's like it's it like it's not good enough. You know, even the two to Everton were quite annoying. But oh jeez, I already locked over my mic. But in the grand scheme of things, conceding two doesn't even seem that bad. But yeah, listen, it's something we definitely need to improve on. Um let's have a quick look at the, the squad and you know the, the ratings and stuff. Schmeichel, as I say, staying at an eighty one, which is it's decent for now. I think, you know, he's a good keeper to have in. Alonso, I am looking forward to playing him eventually. Because he does look like he could be a decent enough goalkeeper. Uh, and this guy obviously looks like he's going to be a future star as well. De Vries, he'll be going out on loan to Valad uh, Valladolid, I should say, in January. Gilardo is doing quite well. We have Hobbs here, who is a um, right-footed left-back. I would like to have another left-footed left-back. He's a little bit unhappy with his contract. So we'll give him a new one. Uh, yeah, sure, that release clause is fine. If someone wants to pay that release clause for him, that's fair enough. Um... Back has done really well, but Fernandez, I have to say, he stepped up in that game, so I would like to give him another game quite soon. Powerhouse Hobbs. I knew I recognised the name from somewhere. I knew I recognised that name from somewhere. Oh, God, I forgot that man even existed. I won't even lie. Powerhouse Hobbs in AEW. Kent, yeah, the future star. It's a shame we've only been able to play him in four games, and you know, one of those appearances was literally coming on for the last second or two there against West Ham. He's the future star, uh, 73 rated, like, I do need to start playing him a bit more, but it's just hard when 
Porig has just been in such great form and obviously has potential to be special. He's just 79 rated at 19 years old. There's nothing to be uh, sniffed at. Calabria doing a really decent job at right back. Madsen, I have to say. He's 27. Christ, I thought he was a bit younger. I do have to say in that game against uh, West Ham, he held his own. Uh, we only took him off in the end because he was knackered and was on a yellow card. So I just thought it was best for Calabria to come on there. Paulinha, he's definitely changed the midfield for the better. Uh, Robson, I don't think I've played and he's unhappy with his contract. We'll just give him a new one. Uh, Reese, I don't know if I've played yet. No, nope, not yet. I think he was a free agent as well. Or maybe he was part of the original team. I can't really remember. Cardosa, he's played a few games, but hasn't really been too spectacular. Schuler, I have enjoyed. I have to say, he's done well uh, for the most part. I, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a harsh critic on myself. I, I'm doing all right, but I know I can do better. Uh, I do have potential to be special as well, but, you know, I need to start getting the numbers in. But I think, I, I think I'm doing okay. I think I'm doing okay, but I could do better. Chavez, he's been putting in some great performances recently. Ibrahim is obviously transfer listed. Afif, he's he's doing all right as as a backup. You know, only one goal in 14 appearances with two assists. That obviously could be a lot better. But listen, I think a lot of those appearances, to be fair, he's come off the bench. Uh, and listen, he was a free agent signing, so you can't expect a lot. But you know, hopefully, he can keep doing better as the season goes on. Uh, uh, London's going to Saint Etienne on loan. Uh, when the season, or sorry, when the transfer window opens, Ferreira, uh, four goals and fourteen appearances. He's getting better. He's definitely felt better in the last few games. I think I want to edit his appearance a small bit. Three assists as well, though, not too bad. McCulloch, I forgot this man was even in the team. Probably should give him a couple of more games. Twenty nine years old, seventy six rated. It's not terrible. Williamson, we're obviously trying to get rid of. Cullen, Alex has gone up to eighty. He's the first one of the Celtic Codec trio to get to 80 rated. So fair play to Alex. Uh, obviously has potential to be special as well. He's only 17 and he's 80 rated. God, if only the real life Alex could have done that as well. No offence, Al. Love you to bits. Evan Ferguson as a backup striker. I mean, three goals and seven appearances. Not too shabby. He's got an assist on top of that as well. He'll keep progressing. Obviously looks like he's going to be a fantastic player in real life. So... Hopefully we can be a fantastic player here. And of course, the English fan, Mr. Roy JJ, the star of the show. 16 goals and 19 appearances. Four assists on top of that as well. You love to see that. So, lads, that will do it for this episode of Clyde United. Hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you to anyone who tuned in. And, of course, a big thank you to you, JJ, for being a part of it, as always. Uh, hopefully, I'll be on here again tomorrow. And, look, if not, I will 100% squeeze one in uh, on Saturday or Sunday. More than likely Sunday. But, listen, you know, stranger things have happened. Uh, thank you, JJ. Uh, it's been a pleasure. And I will talk to you all later. Have a good one.